Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is the Ultimate Unity Tutorial and welcome to episode 10. So this time we are going to take a look at being able to pick up our weapon rather than just start with it. I will also look at fade screens. So I want to start with this weapon, this axe, this nice little axe here. What I intend to do in this uh, tutorial is let's have it inside a tree somewhere. So it's kind of stuck inside a tree and we can go up to the axe and take it out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a, for now, a tree which isn't attached to the terrain. It's just going to be on its own an actual object. Reason being, just so as we can always reference it quite easily. So let's go to our terrain assets, tree, and just bring in the tree. And I'm going to put it, let's put it just here. Now, hopefully, fingers crossed, what we'll be able to do is walk up and take the axe. So best thing to do is let's put another axe in this scene. Yes, we already have one in our hand, but let's put another one in. Reason being is the old bait and switch kind of thing going on here. We have a fake axe and we have a real axe, but you'll see how all this works as we go along. So we'll be using a C-sharp script to sort that out. So let's place another axe or I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll duplicate the axe we already have. And what we'll have is just the axe and we'll chain, we'll take it out of the axe object as its own object and then we'll put it into a different one for the tree. So hold control, press D on the axe, and then drag it outside of the first person controller. So about there. So it uncouples it from there so it's no longer a child object. And let's move it all the way over to the tree. In fact, let's couple it onto the tree and then zero out the position. Be a nice quick way of getting it over there. There we go. And then uncouple it from that tree. So now it's in the right vicinity. We just need to arrange it a little. So let's pull it out this way. Set the rotation. Bring it up. And let's rotate on the Z, so it looks like it's stuck in the tree. A bit like that. And then next thing we'll do is if we go back to our first person controller and turn off the axe. So now, although there's two axes in the scene, we can only see one. So, you can see what's going on here. We have the axe stuck in the tree there. Probably just needs moving over a little bit because it looks... I think it's floating right now. So let's move the axe over a little to about there. Does that look okay? Yep, that looks okay. So next thing to do is let's place a collider around this, which we'll use as a trigger to take it. So I'm gonna use a cube. So right click, 3D object, cube. Uncouple that cube once again, and increase the size one, one, one. Move it into position, so it's going to be about there. We probably need to decrease the size a little, so 0.7. That looks about okay. And then untick mesh renderer. So we've got this all set now. So now we need a script to take the axe out of the tree. So if we go to our scripts folder, right click, create, C sharp script, and we'll have this as axe take. Now I'm hoping you guys should be able to already see the sequence of events that we're going to be using to take this axe out. We'll use a similar kind of mechanism that we've used before on our gem where if we look at it we get some text on screen to say take whatever and then at the same time we run a couple of things which makes the axe disappear and it also puts the axe in our hand. So if we go to collect gem we can pretty much use this same script. So if we take everything inside the public class, and remember a couple of tutorials ago, I spoke about the public class. It's, how can I put it? A little bit sensitive. Remember, it has to be the same name here. So we can't actually take everything. So take from public float the distance all the way down to the second to last close curly bracket. So we can copy that, go to our axe take, and overwrite the void start void update here. 
So one extra thing we have to do in this script is add to our namespace at the top because we're using the text elements. So using unity engine dot ui semicolon. And one thing to always note is that if the code already exists, don't rewrite it. There's, there's no point rewriting code you've already written, so we may as well copy and paste. So next thing to do is we need to change here what the action display says. And we'll probably have to do it again in our collect gem, but that's something for another day. For now, what we need to do is the action text, I should say, I don't think it's action display, it's action text. So if distance is less than or equal to three in the method on mouse over, just before we display it, we'll have action text dot get component in spiky brackets text open close bracket dot text equals take ax semicolon and let's save that script now so at this point we need to get rid of collect sound that doesn't need to be there because we're not going to play any sound we have uh, a one called the gem here. Let's change this to uh, fake axe. So fake axe. We'll also add another one. So public game object. And this one will be real axe semicolon. So down here, once we've pressed our action button, once we've taken our axe, what we need to do is set action text back to blank. So we can change that there. And where we've got the gem dot set active false, we put fake axe dot set active false. And before that line, we need to put the real axe in our hand. So real axe dot set active true semicolon. And then we've turned off our action display, turned off our action text, and turned off our extra cursor. So remember the extra cursor is just a case of if we're looking at something that we can touch or interact with, we just get that extra little bit around our main cursor. So uh, one thing we'll do as well here, we'll take this line of code and we'll also place it here in the else statement. So we need to set that as blank and also this one as blank and then on mouse exit we also need to place that in there as well blank the reason we do that is because if we're not looking at it we need that text to disappear we need it to be nothing so we can rewrite it with something else so now let's save that script and that's how easy it can be because we've already written the main script and that script has easily been adapted for something completely different, just with a couple of extra lines of code. So the cube which surrounds our axe, let's right click and let's rename and call it take axe object. And one thing we probably should do is the very last thing after we've turned everything off is destroy the game object. So destroy in brackets game object semicolon and resave. The reason we do that is because we don't want to continually be taking this axe even though it's not there. So destroying the game object means that this object cannot be interacted with anymore. So now just add the axe take script to the take axe object and we just need to set those variables. So the fake axe is this axe here in the tree. The real axe is the one that's in our hand, which is currently set as inactive, remember? The extra cursor is in our canvas, which is right there. Action text and action display. So I'm gonna save my scene and now let's press play. And let's head over here and let's try and take our axe. Excellent. I'm quite happy with that. So that is how we can pick up, for example, a weapon. 
Now, I did say we we're going to work on fade screens, so let's get to work on a fade screen. Now, a lot of people think that fade screens can be quite tricky and it's all done via scripting. It's actually not that difficult and you don't have to do it via scripting. However, we will be doing a little bit of scripting because we're going to have to start up a scene script. What I mean by that is we will have our fade screen occur, but then we need to script to kind of work around it and turn it off. So first and foremost, let's go to game object, UI and raw image. Double click raw image so we see it. Let's zoom out a touch, shall we? And let's have this centered and let's turn it black. So this is going to be a fade in screen. So this is going to be completely black and then it fades into our game. So let's change the anchoring point to be stretched. Now the reason we have it stretched is so as it literally stretches across the scene. So at this point, if we zero out everything, all we would see is a black screen. Everything would still happen behind it, but this is all we'd see. So to get around this, let's head to our animations folder down here and click on animation. Click on create and let's add this as fade in anim and then press the record button. Now we've worked with animation before, so we know currently it's set as 60 frames per second. And we need to set the first keyframe zero here with the color. It's only the color we're going to be dealing with. And we need to set something called the alpha. The alpha represents how translucent, transparent, or opaque it is. 255 means it's completely opaque, means we can't see through it one little bit. And zero means it is completely transparent, means we can see through it crystal clear. Anything in between is translucent. So we need to set this as 255. So type in 255 here and press X. Now we need to determine how long this fade screen is going to last. I'm going to do it for just a second. So 60 frames. Keep this in mind because it's important when we get to the scripting part. So at the 60th frame, which is one second, we need to have the alpha set as zero. So then press X, stop the recording. Let's head back to project. And now we just need to set that animation on tick loop time. That means it will only play once. So while we're at it, let's right click on raw image here, rename, and we'll call this fade in. So if we press play now, what will occur is the fade will screen in, will fade in quite nicely. There we go. So obviously the longer you have your fade in, well, the longer it goes on, obviously. So you could have this if you wanted to much further along. So I, you know, over here, what's this out now? In fact, I'll probably press record and see where we're at. So frame 90. Let's put this at frame 90. There we go. Stop the recording and press play. You can see it should fade in just that little bit slower. So I think we'll keep it at one and a half seconds, which is 90 frames. So again, keep that in mind. So let's head to our scripts folder and right click, create a new C sharp script and we'll have this called scene. In fact, no, we'll have it uh, 001 scene start. So we're kind of, uh, do you know what? We can't have it that. I've just realized we can't do it that. So what we'll do, let's think of a good naming convention. Let's have a 01 scene start. Right, there we go. So let's open that up in Visual Studio. And we'll probably need to change this here. So we need to change A01 scene start. So the public class matches the script name. And let's save that script. And just make sure that Unity isn't going to have a fit with this script. Perfect, no errors in the console. So what we need to do, firstly, is start off declaring the fade in variable. So public 
game object fade in img. So just short for image, fade in image. And what we're going to do is essentially this script, as I say, is going to be, there's a lot more is going to be contained in this script. We're not going to do it all now. Obviously, we'll do it as we go along through the series as we build and develop more into the game. So we're just starting it by saying after a certain length of time, we can turn off the fade in. So void start is where we're going to at least have a coroutine start. But we need to get rid of void update. Now, I believe we've dealt with iron enumerators before in the axe swing. So we need to use an iron enumerator here because we need to wait for one and a half seconds before we turn off the fade in image. So we need to go i enumerator and we'll just call it scene works. Open close bracket, open curly bracket. So the reason I'm calling it scene works and not something to do with fade in is because we'll probably put other things in this method as well, not just the fade in. So yield return new wait for seconds. And I'm going to wait for just over one and a half seconds. So we'll have 1.6 F semicolon. And after 1.6 seconds, fade in img dot set active false semicolon last thing we need to do void start is start co routine and in brackets scene works up close bracket close bracket semicolon and save let's head back to unity and let's add in a new game object an empty one and this will be our scene control so scene control and i think i'm going to move scene control and weapon control up to the top and let's add that script to scene control and then finally let's add fade in to there and let's press play there we go and you can see fade in in, his, in the uh, hierarchy has been turned off. So everything is good. Now, we're going to leave this here for now. If you want to have a go at a fade out screen, so I, it goes from this to complete black, please do have a go, but we'll do it in the next tutorial anyway. Uh, next, we're going to do a little bit of a debug because I know there is going to be, I think if we click, yeah, we can still swing our axe, even though it's not there. So we're going to work on fixing that as well. And we'll also probably bring in a house, you know, a bit more environment to work with. So, guys, until that next episode, thank you very much for watching.